Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift for the opening weekend. Well, not stage one, on loop. Stage one of opening weekend. Men and women's race will also have UAE Tour results at the end. So it's a triple header, but we're focusing obviously on the opening classic of the season. First, with the men's race. Benji. How many articles were there about Voxnor Victor Campanart 62 tooth chain ring this week? Uh, uh, quite a bit, actually. I think it was really? also on the radio at some point that he was also going to be riding with a classified uh, uh, front derailleur. But um, hey, did it come into play today? That's what we'll see. Eh? What did you think about well, like, no. the, <laughs> the hype towards the race? <laughs> what did I you think feel, about the hype I, towards the race? I got really excited. Was, was favorite, no? Media wise, Campanas was your favorite for the race. No, the Lee was favorite media wise, right? That was the thing. Yeah, it, he was not like under the radar at all. He, everyone was like, no, no, he's a favorite. And before the race, he was like, yeah, I'm a favorite, but I think I'm good enough to be a favorite. And <laughs> I was like, oh, well, we've kind of skipped a few steps, haven't we? He doesn't, <laughs> he's already <laughs> just there, and we'll see in the race. Um, crazy level, but. To let you know what the route is of Omelope, shouldn't just assume that you know exactly what the route is from, uh, where is it? From Ghent to Ninova, it is 207 kilometers long, cold conditions with some rain, but not really disastrous, not in standard levels of Omelope, I don't think, yeah. in 20 whenever. It really, the, what are they called, Benji? The Kassinger or the Heilingen? What's a cobble hel- climb? Well, a cobble is a casse, okay. and a hill is a berg or a hovel. I don't okay. know if that answers the question. And what's a cobbled hill? A casse hovel? No, a hailingen, or is that in something else? A helling is, is the same as a hovel. Okay, so there's as, three things the same for as a, a hill. Yeah. So now there's three <laughs> things. All right, it's changing on me. You can't trust this guy. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and it doesn't have the same punchy ones like an Alder Quamont in a Tour of Flanders, but we have like the Part of Strat, the Hall of Egg early, and then it starts to warm up. I really like the build up of this race. There's a Valkenberg, 500 meters, 8%. The Waldenberg, 600 meters, 7%. They're all separated by about 10 kilometers, 8 kilometers. Then it gets a bit closer together where you have, as I said, the Waldenberg. Molenberg, which wasn't in the race last year when Wout van Aert won. They're going back to the 2021 route. And then after that comes the Berendries and the Moore Kappel Moore Bosberg combination before nine, no, sorry, 13 Ks of headwind, mostly flat running to Nineveh, slightly different finish. So it's a really balanced route. Benji offers attackers. It offers a chance for a sprint. It's whereas Gent Vevelhem is more sprint. This is and Flanders is like one guy always. Omlope is nicely in the middle. Yep. What did you make of what other news was there? Asger and out? That I think yep. impacted the race. Who else was were you surprised not to see Binny here? Uh kind of surprised not to see Binny here, but I guess he wants to kind of limit the amount of cobble race he rides, even though I feel like after last year he's proven that. He can't ride them all. Maybe they want to combine it with I'm still gold race and therefore want to start a bit later. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know what the reason is, but that's a possible thing. But I agree. There's a, an option for two sides in this race, in this parkour. There's those sprinty times like Ballerini that might hope that it ends in a, a larger group sprint in the same way than 2021. Obviously, Ballerini is not in 2021 form, but when it comes to other sprinters like Kristoff and Dali, that's the ideal situation. But then we look at the Molenberg being back, and I'm like, ooh, la, 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 la. That's uh, a narrow run into the climb. That's where action can occur. And uh, spoilers, action occurred. But hey, let's start off uh, with the start of the race by talking about the early breakaway, about one rider in it, because the rest were not really that relevant for the rest of the race. There's a really talented Frenchman on Arkea. How did you say it about Zengel back in the day? Young, talented French rider on Cofidis. Young, talented French rider Lebert. On uh, Arkea Samsic, just like you and Cost you, the Breton, I think, just like, um, oh, who's the other one? Louvel, he's fucking good too on Arkea. Yeah. They got some really good young guys. Vokala, of course, won the other day in Twitter's Alpha Team at Duval. 
So, yeah, the youngsters are looking good. He was really strong on the break. Matthias Norsgaard was there. He always gets in. But it's, it is exactly the break you expect. Two bingo al and a Movistar. And, yeah, they the teams you expect. Yeah. So those riders in there, so you know the break isn't going to play a big role in this race necessarily. They're going to get caught once the, the cobble climbs actually start occurring. And that was really looking like it was a situation. But stuff happened before the actual broadcast started, right? So like, frustrating. I would, oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Because I was like, oh, they're all going to wait until the Molenbeek, Wolvenbeek. Yeah. Those two climbs are the ones where you'll see the action popping up but the first act well the second hill in the race which is like the first one's after 40k the second one's after 110k which is a Gotteberg and on that Gotteberg already splits happened and it was a proper one like yeah I was not expecting this a split in the peloton with Jumbo Visma pacing at the front six riders of the 20 that were gone were Jumbo Visma riders Benoit, Laporte, Tratnik, Van Barle, Van Dijken, the Tim one, and Nathan Van Hooydonk in there, but they had competitors in there as well, obviously. Fred Wright, Marco Haller, Sheffield, Swift, O'Brien, Dan Hole, Ackerman, and Arnaud Dali. The first sign of our 20, yeah. uh, is he 20? 21? 20, right? He's young. I don't, the bull, <laughs> bulls age differently, so I'm not comfortable putting a name, an age exactly on Il Toro. But yeah, he was there solo. I was like, Damn. I saw that on PCS Live Stats. I got so, such FOMO to have a group of 20 like that. It's already split. I was going crazy um, not being able to watch it. Anyway, we then see, or don't see rather, we then hear <laughs> that Van Hoydonk and Tratnik have gone with another group ahead, dropping Delhi. Now we presume, because that doesn't really make sense from Yumbo's perspective. I was like, You've gone from six in 20 with Laporte, your quickest guy, to two in six. You've not really gotten stronger here, and it's so early in the race. I presume the group wasn't cooperating. Otherwise, that move doesn't make yep. sense. They go with uh, Connor Swift, the Ineos, Haller, and Fred Wright. Fred Wright had a strong race here, but just he was reacting a lot, I think, um, and I having felt... the race dictated to him. I felt like he was somewhat in a domestique-like role because he was also end, for sure. facing in groups and I wasn't really sure what to make of, of it throughout yeah. the race because I, I didn't really see the options for Bahrain necessarily at certain points when Fr Fred Wright was doing the work. But um, Trotnik was looking really good, right? And is the Trotnik work from the training in Tere or is it from riding on Zwift during the off-season? I think, I mean, I will do the Zwift plug now. And I will do it well, but Jan Tratnik did attack on Paderberg last year. So, I'd, I, <laughs> so I mean, the Zwift Hub, I got one waiting for me in Andorra. I can't wait to get back. Got the Zwift shirt on. Shout out. Watching the live stream. And I'm going to be getting back on the horse, literally that horse being the Zwift Hub. Go and check out the link down below. Four ninety nine, the best priced trainer, especially the best priced direct trade trainer on the market. Easy to set up, no sweat set up, YouTube tutorials, anyone can do it. Benji and I can do it. That means you can do it. Comes yeah. with the cassette that you want. You just click pre-installed, the cassette, the number of speeds, and then you can jump on, jump in the Zwift to Zwift easily. That's the Zwift hub. Changing the game in the trainer market. Gone are the days of spending four figures on a quality direct drive trainer. Four ninety nine. The Zwift hub. So go check out the link down below and thanks to Zwift for supporting the show but yeah Benji Jan Tratnik uh, maybe he was in Tate just on the Zwift, Zwift hub or on Zwift all day wouldn't surprise me man is gone <laughs> so so well it was like I almost was like is this too early for someone this good because he could just split it on the Berendries or something later but I don't think he and Van Hooy don't committed to that move and what did you see behind yeah. there? Because they're between, just to set the scene, we are before the Molenberg, we are 60Ks plus to go. And you have this group of six where Yumba have two and it, it's chugging along okay. It's sitting at 50 seconds. Ineos are there, so that's okay. I just saw that move virtually ruined Quick Steps race. Although Asgren not starting kind of ruined it, but they were severely on the back foot there and they were having to chase hard. Yeah, they were certainly one of the teams that definitely did a lot of work behind. But also the first one, I think, that started pacing was 
Brent van Moer for Lotto on, uh, I think it was the Padestraal with 80 kilometers to go. And I was kind of surprised at how much damage Brent van Moer's space was doing to the oh, peloton. Nice. He, even, he even like had a, a gap on the second ride who was like, I can't follow that. And then someone else came around to try and close that down. But it was a really proper pace, but you are right. Quick step, basically on the next climb, Mostelidi and so forth was was still pacing. Tim de Klerk being one of the riders that was really putting in the work there, but they lost him on the hostility with 70k to go as he slid out in the corner going into that climb, if I recall correctly. And then Kasper Andersen took over. I think Ballerini did some work as well on that climb or trying to split it on that climb to create a situation where Quickstep had some riders bridging over, but that bridging did not work, but Quickstep kept on pacing and that pace continued for next uh, five, six kilometers then. So they've been pacing for 15-ish kilometers already, if not longer, 15 to 25 kilometers. Quickstep and Lotto have been combining the work, mainly Quickstep. I'd say 80% of the work Quickstep. And uh, finally on the Valkenberg with 65 kilometers to go, that group is finally caught. And it looked like Trotnik and Van Hoydonk weren't spent. Like Van Hoydonk maybe more than Trotnik, right? I think so, and it was pretty clear that, like, so Kel was in the group really strong. He was good in Dwar's Duel of Landron last year. Good to get him. you got to be good to get in that move. He was taking one turn, then he'd skip the next rotation, take that turn. And so I was thinking, like, Yumbo could go to the front and just start driving it themselves to make sure they keep the gap. It didn't seem like they did that. They were happy for it to come back together, came back. And then the race kind of, Yumbo completely took the foot off the gas from my perspective. And we mentioned them a lot because they really did dictate this race tempo. Yeah. And we are not before the we are not at the Molenberg yet. We are still 65 Ks to go. And in this phase, really like Omelope isn't that hard. So it really is hard to get a big gap on the Volkenberg. Yeah. Like a, a 20 second gap. It is hard. And they just stop. Pretty much their marking moves. They're making sure they're represented. In fact, Ineos were very prominent at the front, Benji, with Quickstep and Trek Segafredo. And actually, Yumbo were very, very deep in the bunch. And I thought there was even a moment where Quickstep and, and Ineos might have gone, uh, almost went clear. But what did you see in that phase of the race where yeah. Kung attacked last year? Were you surprised not to see someone joining Fred Wright who tried, I think, in this phase to get something going? I think it started with the Holloway being like a position where this is kind of a cobble section that is just behind the corner to the right, a 90 degree corner to the right, and the road narrows into that cobble section. And we see every year that there's so much fighting going on, sprinting at the front of the peloton to get to Crazy. that position as fast as possible. And... Yumbo was trying with three riders, but half their team was at the back, like you mentioned. Von Bala was at the back. Back in Narnia, like you would say. Narnia. <laughs> Narnia squared. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they were going into that Holloway, and while the positioning fight happened, there was no real follow-up to that, I feel like. I feel like after the Holloway, the tempo damp damped down so much that there was no real action following up, which means that the Vambalas of the world that were back in the Shadow Realm from before the Holloway could move forward again after the Holloway. And this was basically a passive moment in the race until we got to a certain section still before the Molenberg, still a proper amount before the Molenberg, I think roughly 7-8k before the Molenberg, where we had a crash and a mechanical by somebody. I don't know the Lee crashed. He kind of like rode into the curb in a corner is how I viewed it. Is that correct? Did you see it I the think, same yeah, way? Did or? he hit the, the seam of death? The crack of have. death? I yeah. think so. Um, Belgians, man. <laughs> they don't know what their roads are like. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah. man. I don't know. Maybe he pedal strike. I only saw it from the heli shot. He crash goes down. Not big crash, like in terms of going to break your collarbone or something, but he did have a ding well, up well, well. knee. He was bleeding from the Don't knee later. The Lee could break his back and still jump on his bike and yeah, continue the way he's it. riding. He's a the man's insane. The bigger problem was, <laughs> he gets back. Remember, if you go and see one of the 10 Mickey Mouse races he won last year, one of them he crashed. He didn't win that one. And he, I swear, in one motion, crashed and got back up and remounted his bike last year and kept going. It was crazy. In the lead out. It'll, be, it'll be in YouTube somewhere. Um, anyway, that doesn't happen because he has a mechanical... That's the problem. He loses 30 seconds maybe with the crash. Then he has a mechanical, and I'm like, he's fucked. 
I don't yep. care how strong he is. If you're chasing full gas before the Molenberg, where the leadouts are starting now, Yumbo are now coming to the front with Tratnik on the front. Athene did the pre Holoveg leadout. Ineos are coming forward. Dusan Rajevic. No, it wasn't him anymore. He did the Dusan Rajevic. That guy. <laughs> just be careful. S stay around. away from him. Yeah. <laughs> he is on Saudi. A little taster. And today he's just before the Holloweg turned, it's all over the shop. Um, but yeah, the leadouts are starting, and Delee's at the back, and it's going to get narrow. They're not dropping riders back, Benji. Vermesh is third wheel. Voxnor, yep. I don't know where he is. Kampanath, the 62-tooth ch chainring was just keeping him in, in the bunch, maybe. And suddenly we see Delee. Like, there wasn't a mystery. He just sat behind the car, and they full drilled him back. He saw in a helicopter. Like, yeah, but surprisingly, the lotto riders, there were like two or three at the back of the peloton at the waiting. Back, yeah. Like, what, what's the point in waiting to at the back of the back peloton? bring him through the bunch, maybe, once he gets yeah, there from the car? But is, doesn't he need more help getting to the damn peloton? No, because then the car's again, told him, car... we got him. <laughs> we, got him. <laughs> we got him on the bumper. He was literally, you can see guys dropping. You can see Afini, Afini dropping, and he's gone past a million miles an hour. And Listen, you know, everyone that said Niels Ekhoff should have been DSQ'd, where are you today? Where's the comments there today? The guy, James Knox, I feel bad for you, James Knox. It's unfair what happened to you in TDU because this was seen on TV and it's whether, whatever side you're on, you cannot disagree. It is inconsistent. And in that sense, it's unfair what happened to Knox. But we'll move on. So he gets brought back magically before Mullenberg. He's like fifth wheel. Um, because he brings back. And also, it was his fault he crashed. So yeah. it's not like, oh, a spectator brought him down, whatever. It's his fault he crashed. I mean, unfortunate, whatever. But we know what's going to happen, Benji. Sagan drops. Turgis crashed twice. Crashed. He didn't Turgis crash himself trying to get a mechanical in Omlope last year? I swear Turgis had a weird crash before the Mullenberg in this race last year. Someone can oh, correct me on that. This there was no envelope blah. There more, no more than betting in envelope last year, right? Okay, around like forty-five k's to go in this race. <laughs> anyway, Molenberg. I thought Yumbo would initiate. I was kind yeah. of surprised, and I've already forgotten who was it. Like really pushing on Molenberg. Like they entered in good position, but who was it pushing at the front? Was it right again or Kung? Well, I feel like it was a bit difficult going into the Molenberg because just for the people that are listening, you got to imagine, use your head for a second and you see in front of you, you're in a wide street. And at the end of the street, on the left, you've got a tiny road to the left, which goes uphill. <laughs> a peloton wide of the entire road that you're going in can't fit on that tiny road on the left <laughs> at the end of the street. So that well, is a problem they, with the Molenberg. If they Molenberg. go through the tree on the left, they can. Yeah, but the tree was blocked off this time, right? And last year as well, I think. Off. Yeah. So they, they fixed that last year. It's still fixed. But obviously the Peloton doesn't fit on that small road. And as a consequence, there's obviously issues. If you're not in a good position, then you're going to be blocked by people in 20th or 30th or 40th position. And if you're at the back of the Peloton, you might as well walk up because you're, you're not going to get to the front of the Peloton at that point. And I feel like Yamba was still the first one to turn on with three riders, the way I saw it. But when they turned on, the first rider got a bit of a gap, and the second rider took his corner too wide, and it looked like he was kind of having trouble following the wheel of the first rider. And I swear I saw Jan Tratnik being the one that took it too wide, and Nathan von Hoydok had a bit of a gap. But like you say, riders came over that quickly. And I think, I think Fred Y was, was definitely Hoedonk, one of the riders. Right. I think Kung was, all, was also, Kung I just sure. started talking Dutch for some reason. <laughs> Kung was... I'm learning, I'm on Duolingo. <laughs> ich bin Patrick. Uh, Yuli is Benji. Yambo Visma is gold. <laughs> <laughs> There's your Dutch lesson for today. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Tratnik insane lead out. I was surprised to see him doing it on the flat before Molenberg. I would have thought Van Hoydonk would do it, but Tratnik can do everything anyway, apparently. And you're right, <laughs> it was Kung and and right, but a group of twenty formed, unsurprising. But not the group of four or five like we saw after Berendries last year with Wout, Pidcock, Navais, Benoit, Colbrelli. Yeah. It was much bigger than that. 
and we have Milan here. Dali is certainly here. We have Alex Durvin, Genietz, lots of different riders. Lotto Sudal, Destiny, apologies, represented with Vermeersh, Campanats as well. So they're looking good. And Yumbo business plan, which is obvious to make the yeah. race as hard as possible and blow it apart, with the headwind finish after Bosberg and before it, they've not, the Mullenberg's not really create a group of six yeah. where they've got three in. So they did the next best thing, Benji. Dylan Van Baal just doing Dylan Van Baal things. It's Always. Now I think no one's surprised. But no one should be surprised. But it was a weird one, though, because I feel like the group was just kind of like not pacing. And Van Paolo was at the front and then he just had a bit of a gap and he kept on going. And then a second rider went to his wheel. And I think that was Milan that closed him down. Milan, but also Matis Lebert, the guy we spoke about at the start of the podcast from the early breakaway, was <laughs> caught by this peloton. Even I don't know if it was on the Molenbeek or after the Molenbeek, probably after the Molenbeek. And he attacked again. He attacked again because why not Crazy. do that, eh? He joined up with Van Bale, with Milan, and with Florian Vermeer from Lotto Destiny. Four riders going ahead, and they had a bit of a gap, to be honest, for quite a bit. And then Steven and Genietz counted. So those are six teams Mistake. now that are not going to chase. Mistake by Steven? Yeah. I think... I mean, yes and no. Like, you know, it's tough to bridge a group to four, particularly because, and I want your opinion on this, why is Vermeersh? Okay, let's. No offense to Burr. Le Burr, he he was good, um. But at the time, we're thinking guy in the early break. We're not counting him in this yeah. group of four. Why is Vermeersh working with Dylan Van Bala? That's a very good question. Maybe he thinks that he can follow Van Bala throughout this entire parkour in the same way that he did through Paris Bay at that time when he was in the breakaway and ended up yeah. podiuming the race. But that's very different, Nate. This is a situation with actual hills where Van Bala has shown to be a very strong rider on and a rider with unlimited energy because he can just keep on trucking, keep on trucking. And, and I don't get behind. that either. Yeah, exactly. With Milan, similar situation. On one end, I do believe like Milan that he's one of the riders that Bahrain is focusing on this in this race, I'd say. But... He's got the sprint, which is understandable. If you're with Von Bala, then you cannot sprint him, but he needs to get over the hills first. And while he's a good hill rider, I didn't rate him as high as Von Bala to get over these cobble hills. So a lot of the riders in this front group, I was like thinking, is this a good idea to ride with Von Bala, knowing that every single time when Von Bala anticipates the action, when he goes early, he ends up in the final of the race and even competes for the victory. And this happens every single time. At what point do you think teams will respond to Dylan Van Bala in the same way that they do to Remco Evenepoel when he attacks. It's because Early. he's like sneaky strong, you know? There's yeah. no huge attack, although when he did create se separation, you know, he kind of sprinted, but there's no... It's not like Van der Poel on Siena, you know? Or in Strada Bianca where he just torches everyone off yeah. his wheel. It's like a methodical grind and just making the right moves in the right moments. Like... Is Dylan Van Bala, and again, maybe I'm underrating his physiology, is he stronger than Kuhn? Like, I don't, I don't actually know the answer to that. I think he's definitely a smarter racer, and it wouldn't be surprised me if maybe his four or five hour is better. But I don't think there's that much of a difference. Yep. But he just tactically, and of course it helps with having Yumbo behind, because he's up the road, and Vermeersh is working with him, I I think LeBear even was pulling through maybe at time. Yep. Milan was working and Yumbo were just shutting everything down. Everything, Tratnik is just there and it's demoralizing the chase. And this is where the gap is created to the Peloton, Benji, because Sturvin and Genius, remove them. They're not there in a chasse So really, we're now in Peloton against Van Bala Group and Vermeersh helps pull that away at this moment from Dali. Yeah. And, and that's even important more, for the finish. Even more, a group three starts existing when Eko Oliveira van Moor once again, another lotto rider, and Trotnik become a group three behind that chase. So now yes. two lotto riders are attacking the attacking groups away, while the rest is basically, I think, Trek, Ineos, and what's left over from Chef Quickstep. Chef was pacing, I think. Uh, well, Trek wasn't pacing because Steven was ahead. 
What do you say, Sheffield? Probably for Ineos. I, yeah. I think Chef was pacing for Pidcock, yeah. Um, and then... But they ran out of numbers. Clock crashed and hurt himself, so he's abandoned. Ben Turner, unfortunately. Yeah. G3 Bear looked Andres. bad at this time. Bear Andres arrives. Milan is dropped in G1, so he's out. And then something weird starts happening, because on the Bear Andres, Van Avermaet basically starts pacing, and the group of Tratnik, which was that G3 gets caught again, Van Avermaet gets across that group, and the whole peloton is in his wheel. But Milan is still ahead. Milan is still ahead, just behind the uh, Vambala group. And then on the Vossen hole, we see in the peloton, Wellens attacking, Trotnik following, Pitcock attacking, Trotnik following. So this entire day is all Trotnik when it comes to responding and following Crazy. attacks. At the front, Vambala drops Florian Vermeersch. Leber is the only one that can follow. So right now we've got a situation where Vambala is at the front with Leber, with roughly 25 kilometers to go. In the second group, which is Milan and Florian Vermeers, they still exist. And then the third group is the peloton, where in that peloton, Trek is pacing again because Steven is caught again, and Bahrain is pacing. So Bahrain is now pacing, pacing in two groups. Yes. <laughs> that. Well, they, they, at that point, Milan's gone. They give up on <laughs> Milan. But yeah. Milan should come back to the group yep. and start pacing them because they're going for Morich now. Because Fred Wright is pacing that group. Clearly, they're going for Morich. And yeah, should, so it, it makes sense have to been me that around. decision. Should Morich have been the rider with Von Bale and Milan the rider in the peloton that gets over the mirror and gets a sprint? Yeah, but Milan was the one who tracked Van Bale's anticipation. So. That's the problem. Like once Van Bala has a ten second gap and he's in the saddle, I don't know. Like you got to be in the wheel. Even like Milan got cooked chasing that anticipation. So because yes, in theory, it would have been the right thing that way. The way Mohoric can win these races is exactly the way that Van Bala is winning these races. Yeah. For example, anticipating the attacks, going early. So in my opinion, the ideal situation for Bahrain would have been that Mohoric would have been the Milan in this situation. And that way, they can pace behind if Mohoric isn't good enough, because then Milan is their second option to sprint after the Mur. But the Mur is coming up, and in all honesty, Dylan Van Bale, yeah, Libera wasn't going to hold on, eh? That second oh, group Lebert. with Milan and Sothov was getting caught by the peloton, and Dylan Van Bale goes on to the, the first spots of the Mur. The Vesten is what we call it. That's another Dutch word for you. And Thank you. <laughs> Dylan Van Bale basically insta-drops Libera. <laughs> It was like in a corner. It looks like he kind of like slipped at some point the way the camera went back to him and LeBear was out of his wheel. And behind, there were attacks in the peloton. Tim Wellens being the strongest attacker on the move on here, is betting Mohoric in the wheel. And uh, that is what we saw initially on the Vestin. And then they go towards the Capelmur section and the gap is coming down a bit. We're talking about roughly 23, 25, 27 seconds, I think, at this point. It wasn't significant it was closable he had 40 seconds at the bottom if i recall correctly and suddenly we get a camera angle from the peloton it's still wellens that is one of the stronger riders moritz still very strong as well but behind that the lee is dropping laporte <laughs> 30 cadence 30 rpm <laughs> he's in the big it's ring like on the moon <laughs> he's just going <laughs> <laughs> and he's dropping laporte it's crazy <laughs> oh. um and I was like, he's going to MVP Amstel this race, this whole damn thing. Even with, you know, what we discussed before, like, it's crazy. And Wellens is super strong. The problem for them is Van Baal just doesn't collapse. There's no, like, okay, well, on the Bosberg, he's just going to redline and give away 25 seconds. That's just not the rider he is. We know that from Dwar's door, from Roubaix, all those races. And... The key here is Tratnik's punctured out of the race. Kung is trying to get to Laporte's wheel. Laporte has to get to that group of three. Has to. Because if they catch Van Bala with Dali there, big problems. And he needs to be there so they at least have a numerical advantage. But it's working out, Benji, pretty much identically to Benoit ahead yep. last year. And then Wout well, coming across. This time the group is smaller. So... I was surprised a group of four guys went clear on the moor, actually, with a headwind yep. race like this. It must have been cold. The race must have been hard overall. Is it? 
because Wellens launched from on the Vestin before the actual proper steep section of the climb, went really early on the climb and therefore made it harder. And didn't look With back, a harder just... race before, which also makes it harder to follow. And as a consequence, the, the Peloton's already on a stretch, is already having trouble, and therefore the splits on the climb are more significant. That's at least how I analyze why it's much more selective, because it's in the same way that the Muur van Gerards Berghen was much more selective back in the day in the Ronde van Vlaanderen, when the parkour was just much harder. I would say that easily this race had much more kilojoules expenditure before we got to the Muur van Gerards Berghen compared to last year. Yeah, for sure. Has to be with the cold, with the Molenberg, with the Umbo going early and then that group of six ahead forcing the peloton to chase and keeping it all tight has to have been a harder race we're doing that on the eye test so we could be wrong <laughs> um, but yeah you'd think so anyway headwind can van Bala stay away you've got that group with delete morridge wellens there isn't too much really more to say to be honest the gap stays at 20 seconds goes to 17 goes to 15 goes to 17 goes to 18 goes to 16 there's a moto cavalcade for Van Bala. Are we surprised? Absolutely not. This is just like, it's literally an expected advantage for yep. a solo attacker. It's, you'd be surprised if it wasn't there. It's just a reality. It's a shame. It does affect the race because group two didn't have one. Group three did have one. Last year too, Wout van Aert had the same yep. advantage. Mohoric and Milano Sanremo had the same advantage. A solo rider usually has the advantage when it comes to the motorbike draft Benjamin that he gets Thomas? ahead of him. In that Tour de France, that was crazy. That was like he was on the track, Derny. <laughs> in, well, say, was it on the Laporte one? I can't remember. That was, I think yes. Was, yeah, that one was oh. great. Um, anyway, Van Baal's in a super aero position. Dali and, I will say, Dali, Morich, and Wellens, I expected them to give up earlier. They, and I think it's because... It must have been so demoralizing for Laporte to be in the wheel like that and yeah. just following everything. And yeah, they didn't really... Because they know it. if they try to shake him, it he'll catch them the first couple of times and then it'll stop. And it's not an efficient way to ride as a group. And it's a strong and headwind. He's freewheeling when Delis pushing 450 watts. And he's also not just sitting at the back the entire time. He's also no. making sure that he makes it more annoying in the way that he moves up in the relay, he moves up in the rotation, yeah. and then just before he gets to the front, the rider that is behind Laporte has to come past and already yeah. move forward. And in therefore, the headwind. In, in the head, that matters. And definitely when it comes to the work that they have to do, it also matters. So yeah. <laughs> it's just harder physically and psychologically for the riders in that group. The Lee, I'll be honest, I felt like the Lee was doing most of like the hard work there in that group. I think all three worked on at top form. No. All, all three worked a lot, but I felt like the least pools looked like they were doing more, but maybe that's just because he was still riding at 50k. It's... I think Moritz is sneaky efficient in a headwind like yeah. that too. He's smooth. But Van Bala's solo. I mean, he's solo. There's still three guys working with Laporte being an irritant. Group three's coming back. EF start pacing. Well, I, st I now think... Coming back. Well, no, no, I thought if they get organized, 5Ks to go, it is straight up headwind if they really start pacing. But the question is, for who? Because it's almost like, Benji, if Lotto fully approached today's race, all for Delete, which they didn't do in my opinion, and tried to have a yeah. shutdown race for Delete, I'm not sure Van Bala wins and yeah. it plays out this way. If Vermeersh is used in a really negative role, if Campenas is used in a negative role, and I know Du Bois crashed. And listen, a lot of Destiny Pro Conti team, they were one of the best teams in the race today. They were they still had three guys in groups of twenty. I'm just saying, they got the guy now, and he was doing a lot of work himself. What did Campenas do today that favored the Lee? I don't know. I didn't we obviously didn't see before eighty Ks to go, but it didn't look like much, to be honest. Maybe he'll and position him a little bit. With Van Moer and Florian Vermeer being the attacks, which I understand that if Dali is you doing this race for the first time, that you maybe want to play more cards to have them in the grooves, but you don't need to work with those riders. Yeah. In the same way, Kampenart said before the race, in an ideal world, I'm in the front group and Dali in the group behind me. And I hope that it, in his mind, that means that 
Campanars wouldn't be working in that group ahead because the Lee is clearly one of the favorites to win this race before the race starts. But anyway, we're in this situation. The gap comes down a tiny bit. I feel like towards like 12, 13 seconds for a bit. But the second they turn into the headwind, it starts increasing again. I know. Uh, ha, how? <laughs> Van Baal just, yeah, looks super efficient. I don't know. Maybe the, the motor has helped a little bit. But he, he goes away to win his first race for Jumbo Visma, winning Omlope. He won Paro Bay last year, twice do the year before, a big pickup for Jumbo Visma. Yeah. Who didn't have Wout Van Aert at this race. The group behind. This is why, Benji, I was like, I thought Dali was gonna Amstel MVDP this race. Cause I at no point did I think Christophe Laporte's just gonna easily beat him in the sprint, just because Dali's been pulling. I've seen too many races, even if they're not world tour races, where Dali has done crazy shit bridging echelons himself solo and then ruining 20 guys in a sprint, he can always sprint after a hard race. And that's why this guy is a classics future superstar because after how many kilojoules they did, this guy can always sprint. The group behind catches them in the finishing straight. They're going 5 kph quicker because they're coming with a huge momentum of a peloton and he starts his own sprint with no lead out, dust everybody. Christoph can't out of the wheel can't really move up side by side. Crazy performance. Uh, but just he got outplayed by Team Tactics today and a stronger overall team. Jumbo Visma, first with Van Baal, second to Lee, third is Laporte, Christoph fourth, winning the uh, bunch sprint sort of behind, if we don't count Laporte and Lee. Peacock fifth. He said his sprint's not as good as the style of race, but pretty Bad. good sprint result. Ballerini good sixth, sprint. Paul at seventh, Pascal on eighth, Oliveira ninth. UAE were actually quite good today without Pog, and Marka yep. tenth. How do you rate this edition, Benji? A pretty damn good race, I think. Now, I will say when it comes to like the, the Dylan Van Bala victories, they're not the most hyped victories. I won't lie. The most hyped scenario of this race is someone coming back last minute or, or Van Bala winning Delay by like solo. one, two seconds on the line. Like if it gets closer, because yeah. in the last 10 kilometers, I never really had a feeling that Van Bala was about to lose this race. So that final tension would have been needed to escalate this race to be a bit higher. That's yeah. at least how I feel it's like. Little Vomala was tiny bit too strong. <laughs> but yeah. it's also... What makes this race change your opinion about other races in the future? Because like, going into the season, I feel like I had the opinion that Dylan Van Bala joining Jumbo Visma would make Dylan Van Bala win easier compared to winning Wout van Aert win easier. Does that make sense? Because yeah. I feel like it's easier to leverage a very strong team and therefore benefit from anticipating moves than it is from being the rider chained up behind because Van Baal is in the group ahead. I mean, it depends how it plays out, right? So say Wout yeah. Van Aert's in the Laporte position, that group catches uh, Dylan Van Baal after the Bosberg or something in Dendermondene, the one where they do the left-hand turn with whatever case to go. Yeah. Um, Dender Nendermonde. They, Dendermonde. That's, okay, got it. Third time lucky. And Wout well, can anticipate, like Asgren re-attacked in E3. Then, yep. I mean, there's ways for him to win, I guess, but I agree that what ends up happening, Sword and World Championships, when you have the stack team, you have the anticipators like a Remco. The, most of the top favorites have a sprint. They're not the long distance guys. MVP, Pog even. Pog, his key is like the punch on the hardest point of the race. They're behind the group all marking each other. And then you actually, you basically get to put another super strong rider like Remco in a group because they can't mark him or everybody with guys way inferior to him. And yep. you get Dylan Van Baal, and there's a moment where Vermesh is like, oh, well, for sure Lotto Destiny Benji, if Vermesh is with Wow, he ain't pulling like that. Yeah. But because they're like, ah, oh, it's Van Baal, but he's going to fucking drop you. Like, he, he's going to ride away from you. He's done it enough times if you're not like the cream of the crop leaders. I remember when we were in the. Was it the World Championships of Flanders or was it Roubaix or Tour of Flanders last year where we had the exact conversation, will Dylan Van Bala still be underrated next year? And I think we disagreed on it. I don't know who took which side, but it's clear that 
I think they still underrate him. I think so. Or it's just, yeah, like, they don't think he will... They won't think, oh, he'll just kill me on the moor. And yeah. but to be honest, Vermeesh also, he, as you said, he podiumed Roubaix. Like, he's a young guy. He was in good shape. And I do want to say, Lotto Destiny is a positive race result yeah. overall. Not just because of Dali, but because you had Van Moor, Campanats, uh, Vermeesh. You had other guys performing too, which is, a lot of them are also quite young. So that's encouraging. Quick step, not a great start. Uh, Benji Ballerini sort of did his best from the sprint. Ineos pretty much the same, but then Turner crashed out. What does this say, though? No Pog, I think no MVP, no Binny, no Pedersen. It's very difficult because last year we started off with Jumbo Visma winning Omlob. They also ended up winning E3, and we had this feeling that Jumbo Visma was the, the towering team above everybody else, definitely the strongest team and block last season at that point. But as you said, Van der Poel and so forth hadn't arrived yet. Pogacar hadn't arrived yet. Those were waiting for the likes of RVV and so forth, partially to injuries, partially because Pogacar did not desire riding every couple of races last year yet. And then we arrive at those races and we had Vinod getting ill when it comes to RVV. And then we had a puncture and a wheel break at Roubaix. So we didn't really end up seeing the clash against each other, but I felt like the team of Jumbo Visma wasn't as present then in Roubaix when they had all those cards in block. They had a lot of bad luck in that race though. So this year I'm waiting because this is going to be a completely different dynamic the second that Vanderpool arrives. I am disappointed in certain Crown Anderson though I feel like he dropped really early today. So I is don't know here? how much he will add. What, sorry? Was he here? Yeah, he was here. I saw him dropping. He and must be I sick or something wrong. He came 12 minutes down. Well, he was not in, in amazing shape for this race, at least in this race, that's for certain. But I'm also disappointed in the way Bahrain wrote this race because I feel like they used their cards wrong. I feel like Fred Wright shouldn't be your rider to pace at the front of a group to try and force moves very early. I feel like he's one of those riders. I feel, I feel like he could have been in the Mohoric position because he has the sprint. If it goes wrong. I feel like other teams let him down. I feel like he was trying to make something happen in that phase of the race where Yumbo were trying to chill and maybe Yumbo were not letting anything happen. And that's where, if you're Sturvin Genietz Benji, mm -hmm. you know Yumbo are going to kick it off on the Mollenberg and you know they're going to enter in better position than you and you know they're going to have numbers. Why isn't Genietz, Sturvin, and joining right? Maybe they tried. I can't remember every single attack, 50 case to go. That's where they should almost be trying to get ahead of Jumbo Visma if they can. And but when they're trying to take a breather. Isn't Jonathan Milan in this race, BTEC, Arnaud Ali, in the sense that you're trying to make sure that you have that sprint at the end with Milan? Yeah, he because should be in the group too. they didn't do chill. that. Because he ended up reacting to Van Bala, which... It's good to respond to Van Bala. That's what they but should do, pull. but not with Milan, I would say. I think someone else would have responded. Someone else yeah. should have been the rider to respond to attacks at that moment in the race, which, in my opinion, the perfect rider to do so is Mohoric. But he was the one that was waiting for the final of the race. So I'm kind of like, I feel like they used their cards at the wrong moments. But a team that we certainly haven't spoken about all day, and uh, I was surprised they were in this race. Alpacin where were yeah, they? Yeah, not great. They were going for Philipson in this race, but this race was way too hard for Philipson. That is understandable. Yeah. But if you put your cards into a sprinter completely in this race, then it's gonna... Ah, it's very difficult, eh? Because Johnny Vermeers, he's had good days in the past, but I wasn't gonna count him with the riders that were gonna get away towards the end. So I feel like they're really hurting by the fact that Vanderpool is not riding these races, and they're really hurting by the fact that they didn't focus on the first two months properly, I feel like, in this season already. It won't hurt them in the long run, I feel like. I think we'll see them top-notch at Sanremo, at Strade, and so forth. But it feels like they've just been inexistent for two months, with Philipson not riding UAE Tour, Plowride being their sprinter there. So it's kind of a feeling of two months of where is Alpacin? And I feel like that feeling will change the second that March will start. But 
when it comes to Uno X, Christoph, great strategy. Just relax in the peloton and hope that everything comes together <laughs> yeah. because that's yeah. the only way you can do something well, here points. with Alexander Christoph. Exactly. That's valuable points. And, and Christoph is once good. again. He was. He was also the one pulling a lot back after yeah. the ball's better, right? Yeah. Tiller was pulling Norwegian champ. So they had a clear strategy, get the best result possible for Christoph. They did. Probably the best result he could have got today. And maybe if they'd gotten a little bit more help, he even comes second, um, which would have been classic Christoph. So they're getting yep. there with Christoph. They're getting the version of Christoph they exactly wanted, I think. So yeah, good for them. Virus Quickstepper, like Patrick Lefebvre was having what looked like a lot of little Amstel um I'm still fueled holiday in Rwanda with they're winning with Vernon, <laughs> the Seth. He's having a great time. And you know it's good. A double Instagram post when the same post gets posted twice. I like both every time. Um Bum. you know he's having a good time. And he's come back for this Benji opening weekend. Yeah. In the cold, watching this performance. Back to the drawing board. I think for quick I, think so as I mean well. Jala's without Jala, without Remco, without Asgren. It's like, yeah. What can I mean, they do? Yeah. What, I mean, Ballerini 6 is probably what they could do. I think they're on the right cost for Peterson, though, because he was one of the He's earliest good. riders to base when the Cleric fell out. So I feel like he might have been a job. rider that. It's not their job. Yeah. There's no why, point why are they in Quickstep carrying this race. Like, yeah, they're behind, but so are other teams that yeah. have higher profile riders to win this race than you at that moment. Exactly. They're just like, oh, well, fuck this. You know, Drake's on the radio being like, you're in, you've missed it. We're quick. So it's like, no, you're without Asger and Alphilippe Remco. Yeah, I know Lampard's there, but yeah, I think they, it, they got to take a step back and realize when we don't have those guys here, it's not up to us to bring this back and make the race. It's a Bahrain's job with Pascal on right, Morich, all these guys, Hausler, yeah. uh, the GOAT. But yeah, Hustle. I enjoyed the race. Uh, Jumbo Visma looking looking pretty threatening. Tratnik looking crazy. I don't know who's at Kerner tomorrow. We'll do a Kerner Billy? recap. Philipson? Oh, they? We'll do a Kerner recap maybe Monday, Tuesday, no promises. Um, we'll do her feet tomorrow, but I can't stay up late enough for Kerner tomorrow. I'm, I'll die. Uh, any last thoughts on the men's omelette, Benji? Oh, I think when it comes to the MV of the day. I think Von Bala just proves that he's still there, that he can still do the same thing that he's done before. The leap proves that he's there in World Tour races, which is an upgrade because so far we've seen him do the crazy shit in 1.1 races and so forth. This is a step up for me, even though it was an expected step up. It was not expected to this degree because nah, he crashed, like had a mechanical, was riding like crazy up the mirror at 30 cadence. I wasn't expecting that. And then this has signs. In this has signs of the next big thing in Belgium. And I think the media it? is definitely milking it already. The which, B word? Are people going to use the B word this week? They've used the B word. They've used the B word. He's oh, the next on Bolin, according to the Belgian media, which <laughs> I feel like, is it the other way around? Is Tom Bolin was his the better first quality? Arno de Lee. What's his better quality? Cobble or sprinting? Or do we not know yet? I don't know how we're going to go on the climb on. Um, on that sort of... I don't know. I don't know. But... Uh, his sprint after fatigue is mental. It's crazy. So, Insane. Like, yeah. Props to him. Props to a lot of destiny. That's oh, all and I Tratnik. have. Oh, and Tratnik, yeah. That's, yeah, scary. If he didn't get a puncture, maybe he catches that ball and beats, <laughs> beats him. Um, to do a lead out before the Mollenberg like that and then be chasing groups after Mollenberg. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Okay. That was men's omelette. On to women's omelette. Now, unfortunately, we don't have as much live coverage of this race it starts after the no sorry the women's race starts during the men's race and then continues on like the coverage domestically so it's really good domestically because they transition straight from the men's finale into the women's race pretty much gets a lot of good viewership but it means we don't get to see as much of the women's race but the finale is largely the same as the men's race we have the molenberg we have berendries and the Moore, uh, uh, what's the last one? Bosberg. Bosberg. Com combination. Headwind two, because it's just straight afterwards. The chopper's got to fly over to do the race. And did we see Sierra's anticipation, Benji? Or did the race coverage start 
with her solo. Starts with her solo, but before okay. we had Movistar doing similar moves with the likes of Ode Bianic, who was in the attack together with uh, Kalen Swenkels from, La, from Yumbo. I was going to say Lotto and El Yumbo. <laughs> That's like 10 decades ago. <laughs> anyway, um, so Movistar is doing the opposite thing from last year. Last year they were moving towards the, the Muur van Gerardsberg and doing a lead out from Amik van Vleuten. This time they weren't doing that. Maybe they had in their mind that Van Vleuten was not the strongest last week at Sitmana Ciclista, Valenciana, Comunitat, Volta, Valencia, something like that. Very crazy name of a race. But anyway, Movistar doing the opposite now. They're basically doing a reverse lead out where they attack with people and have the other teams bring their own team back towards that rider. But Sierra took a lot of time. Like she had a minute going into <laughs> the mirror. I don't know if the GPS was correct because I feel like it might it have been like 30 today. to 40 seconds. But it was a big gap, a bigger gap than I anticipated to happen. And then the sprint towards the move on Herard's betting happens in a similar fashion than in previous years in this race. And we see that SD Works is a team that is doing that. I think DSM was on the other side of the road doing that. Yeah. And those two teams were basically hammering it into the bottom of the climb. SD Works for two riders, Kopecki and Wibis. Wibis was on the wheel of Kopecki. And DSM was doing that for Five for Georgie. And what did you think was going to happen? What did you think SD Works was going to do? Because Wibis is a pretty strong, fast rider, but is she going to get with the best over the mood? What I honestly thought was they maintain front position, they follow an attacker of a Lippert, of a Van Vlerten, of a Pfeiffer Georgie with Gepecki. She sits on and they negatively race to have Vibas roll back. That's what I thought would happen. It's and that they could have won that race that way too. Um, that would have probably worked as well. Um, that wasn't what they did. What happened was Lotta Kopecky absolutely stomping everybody. She goes. Was she in the western part? What's it called? The western. Uh, yeah. She went there. Yeah, seated. Five for Georgie's off the wheel. Five for Georgie tries to get across. Gets sort of across. Drops. Goes back to the group. There's Elisa Longaborghini biding her time. I couldn't see Balsamo where she was. Van Vleuten's gone. World champ who won this race last year. Entered the climb also. Maybe she flattered before the climb because I didn't even see her in first 10 at the base. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks like she was in the shadow realm by the time we arrived towards the Capelmer section of that climb because Pfeiffer Georgie was losing the wheel of Kopecky while Kopecky was hammering it up the climb towards Sierra. And I feel like Kopecky reached Sierra just when she reached the top of the climb, basically. Yeah. So those two riders were at the front of the race and behind. It was a group forming, not Georgie. Georgie was basically getting caught by the group behind. And to my surprise, Wibus was with the strongest riders outside of Kopecky on the move on Gerardsbergen. She was getting over that climb in third, fourth position. And if Longoborghini is hammering it and she's able to stay in third, fourth wheel, well, they could have won this race with Kopecky. Uh, with Wibus, I mean. Yeah, from like a group, not from a sprint, like a group of 40, like from a group of seven, six, like Van Vevelhem, Wav and Art style with yep. Van Hoydonk. This was, uh, and Vibas, I swear she did, she gave a quote maybe this week or before, and she said, listen, I want you to see this year, I'm not just a pure sprinter. I was like, come on, you're already <laughs> pretty good at sprinting, there's no need. There's no need to get good at other disciplines within road cycling. And I was like, holy fuck. If she's making that group now, everyone's got a huge problem. And it didn't matter as much for the win today. There is a headwind. So if the group does get organized behind with a DSM or Movistar for Norsgaard, FDJ, maybe they won't. But maybe they can bring Kopecky back. Problem for them was Sierra's working with Kopecky at least 50-50 yeah. before the Bosberg. And she's been solo for tw uh, 15 Ks, 14 Ks after a solo attack. Uh, and I'm like, it made no sense, Benji. It, it didn't make a difference. She was going to get dropped anyway, but the it only was way, a strange look. The only way that Sierra works in that situation is if she knows that she's good enough to follow Kopecky over the Bosberg. Otherwise, you don't pace with Kopecky, she, you just hold on. She almost on. convinced me. I was like, oh, maybe she knows. I was like, is she, is she about to drop Kopecky? <laughs> like, She's the new reincarnation she, of Von Vleuten. 
Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Um, that didn't happen. Uh, based on Bolsberg, Kopecky just ruins her off the wheel and yep. goes solo. And it's not over. It depends on what happens behind, but the, the chase just didn't get organized quickly enough. Brown and Ludwig Benji, there's no... Uh, there's just, yeah, eventually Brown a- attacks, but there's no, like, one-two attack or whatever. Um, that didn't really work. Trek, do they have Van Dyke here? That's the key. She is the glue. No. Um, they didn't. I think that makes a difference. Like... Yeah, she kind of, yeah, she just really, you know, hot take TT world champ, one of the best TT riders of a generation, is really useful in classics at bringing things back. So that was a big miss for them, Trek Segafredo. But how do we rate Kopecky here, Benji? Uh, spoiler alert, rides away solo, dominant fashion, like no one her equal in a race that doesn't have you know, it's not as long as the men's race, and to get separation like that is yep. crazy. How do you rate her performance um, against a strong, a strengthened Movistar team? I think she's looking as the prime candidate for a lot of cobble races incoming, and Strade included, with Van Vleuten definitely not being at her best, even with a mechanical potentially happening, because... I feel like Van Vleuten is not, not at her best right now. That's how no. I, I feel about her right now. Maybe our mind changes about that when she destroys everybody in Strade out of nowhere. That is a very uh, possible thing. But Lippert was definitely the strongest Movistar rider today is how I would view it. Now, when it comes to other riders in other teams, like, what do you say about FDJ? Because Uttar Plutovic was a strong rider. She was in that Lippert group on Bosberg when they tried kind of making a group there. But... If they're in a chasing group with multiple FDJ riders, they're never working together. So they're working against each other to get a situation where they can actually do something in this race. And it results in nothing for them in that sense. And yeah, Kapani wasn't here. So a sprint, they can't get anything from that either. It just shows that Kopecky and Ribas can work together well if Ribas is strong enough to be in the second group. If she's not yeah. strong enough to be in the second group, then you have to try and balance it out and see who's going to be the strongest and who do we bet on but because Ribas is so strong they can bet on both cards i think with ftj's team you know out of haste who just won with uh world championships or indoor e cycling world championships she just won and cadell evans road race in a very strong sort of hilly course like the way she won ahead of sprout was strong brown cavalli guazzini lynette ludwig they got to be anticipating earlier like Movistar, they have to get ahead early. They have to make the race like Jumbo Visma did in the men's edition. You have to, you got to start from the end, to quote uh, Dan Bigham in his book, start from the end. Number one, do not want to go to finish with Vibas. Cannot yep. happen. So what do we need to do to make that not happen? Make the race as hard as possible, get riders up the road who are better overall classics e all-rounder one-day riders. Second thing you don't want to happen is go to the base of the move with Kopecky, with them, with Ludwig or loads of ST workshops who got to anticipate earlier. If you do, actually be on a reel when she attacks in the vest yeah, because yeah. I feel like Georgia and Kopecky were attacking there and the rest was kind of like looking at each other who's going to close the gap there yeah. and then went on the steeper part. But by then the gap is made. And if there's no one pacing for you behind the Kopecky move, then the gap will be significant enough that she's... A, Oh, she's basically gone by the time we just eat part of the of the move on the Gerard's betting. And so, hey, that's uh, how I view it. Plenty of action to come in following races, but Kopecky was the strongest today. As simple as that. SD works. Two strongest riders, strongest overall team. Yep. Vibas wins the bunch sprint behind comfortably. UA fought admirably to pace with Amelie Usyk and Gasparini and Elizabeth Holden. So they did do a, a good job for Bastianelli and Alberto Sol, I think, let her out. She came second behind Vibas in the bunch room behind. Norsgaard fourth, Georgie fifth, Anushka Koska, then Quintiton Schweinberger and Paladin Longaborghini. So not, not Trek's best day, actually, in the classics uh, today. Now, listen, yep. they can't win every race. I'm just saying, like, they're usually, like, I consider them one of the best three teams. So not their best day, but we'll see how they go. 
with uh, Van Dyke, the glue, and the team coming back. But yeah, Kopecky looking scary with Fevers. So, what do you think about Van Lurten, Benji? We can't count. I don't out. know. We don't know. We're not we overreacting. Don't know. We can't count her out for any races in the future, but I yeah. do feel like from the Valenciana race that she's not at the same level as she was last year at this point in the season. And maybe that's not a bad thing because the Tour de France is like decades away. And True. when it comes to the classics, they're coming, but she's still got a month and a half to get to the level. So I think she'll be fine. I think so. Do you think the days of Kopecky really going for bunch sprints are done? I think there's too many riders similar to her, Ooh, worse quicker. in cobbles, but equal if not a tiny bit better in sprint like a Balsamo, that she can't risk sprinting in a group against Balsamo. And therefore she'll rather take her chance attacking. And I think we'll see the same in Gent Wevelheim where Kopecky will be You're the right. attacking option. And then we'll see Wibbers being the rider in the group behind for that team. I heard she changed her training up a little bit and she's, yeah. she like went for, and it's smart she did. Whether she chose to do it, whether the team said uh, Lorena Vibas is here, so if there's a sprint and she's there, you're going to be doing a lead out. So if you want to win races, maybe attacking, aggressive, yeah. traditional classics rider, and maybe she decided, okay, I'm going to go all in on that. And if she did, if I'm making it up, I don't know. But today, she was damn strong on the Moor and on the Bosberg. Credit to Lotte Kopecky winning in that fashion. Headwind is super impressive. So that was women's omelope. UAE Benji, we're not doing a full recap. I'm exhausted. Uh, Tim Merlier won the sprint, predictably. Not from yeah. Bennett's wheel, per se. He went full throat of death up the inside. But Bennett, once again, hesitated after the Van Poppel lead out and got swamped a little bit. But then his sprint was quite strong. I would have liked to have seen, once again, if Bennett jumps a bit earlier. And also, I think Benji Van Poppel's not... If Van Poppel peels off right, and let's Bennett through that gap. Merlier gets blocked, right? Because that's what happened. Bennett shut Milano off when he went it's a, to, to go. It's exactly the same situation as the Grunewagen victory, where one of them is not doing something. Yeah. And I don't know which of the two it is. It's either, either Bennett not launching on time, or Van Poppel not going out of the way in time for Bennett to launch through. So yeah. they got to find what the thing is that is causing that trouble, because... That could have cost them a victory by now. I do think Merlier would have still won regardless I think so, of yeah. that happening. Because Merlier was uh, going full mental into the side of the road there and was uh, destined to win this race in this sprint. And it's also, this was the finish that we said the other day. I think it was yesterday that we mentioned that the lead out was going to be so vital and the ones that wave over the others will matter the most. And Van Poppel did that perfectly, that wave attack. But then... You gotta, you gotta get the last part right as well, and that did not happen. Merlier wins ahead of Bennett, Groenewegen in third. Coy declined, Wellsford, Tyson, Leipinge, Bauhaus, Einhorn. GC, Remco still nine seconds ahead of Bill, uh, Plapp, 13 seconds ahead of Bill Bow. We have Jabel Hafeet tomorrow. Um, mountaintop finish, it's not that hard, but it's reasonably hard. 10.7k, 6.8%. I think you think Yates wins Benji and puts himself on the GC podium? Yeah, I think Yates wins and puts himself on the GC podium. I think Remco will be the best competitor for him. He might even win the Remco, but I feel like we got to give UAE something. Otherwise, Adam Yates might lose his contract if he doesn't end up winning the UAE <laughs> Tour. So he has, to, he has to win the stage. Come on and get on the podium of this race. I feel like the race is going to be pretty explanatory. If there are no echelons before we reach the climb, which is a big if, because in the women's yeah. race there were echelons, if there's no echelons here, then UAE hammers the bottom of the climb, launches Adam Yates as soon as possible, and yeah. he hopes to take as much time as possible on competitors. And if he is loose alone, he's got the biggest chance of the largest gap. If he isn't, then he might get frustrated by someone being in his wheel who might ask for them to take over, and that might reduce the gap that he can take, but he just got to keep on pacing, eh? regardless of, yeah. of who's in the wheel. I think he attacks. I think Remco's in his wheel. I think Remco wins the stage from his wheel. And okay. Yates moves up loads of podium spots, but not... I think what you just described does happen, where he starts to think a bit about the stage with Remco in his wheel, and that reduces his GC gain, and he misses out on the GC podium because of it. I think Yates drops Evenepoel in that section where every single time... He goes on the pedals for a very long time with Pogacar yeah, and his yeah. wheel in previous years. Long, that section bit. where 
two kilometers to go, three kilometers to go, a bit yeah. more than the full, uh, the roughly flatter that. section. Yeah, that's where the the, the race is decided. I think. Okay. That's UA to look forward to tomorrow. We'll have the recap a bit earlier uh, tomorrow. Oh, because, yeah. And, oh, yeah, sorry. Elbow fracture for Ben Turner. Oh, fuck. Not good for Ineos. Not good for him. That's a real shame. I think he just had a contract extension in the offseason or the end of last year. But yeah, Turner was going to be clearly at least co-leader with Sheffield and Pidcock in the classics. And I was really excited to see how he went this year. I hope he yeah. comes back. For maybe Tour of Flanders Roubaix, but who knows? But rest up and best wishes to Ben Turner. That's all from us today. Thanks to Zwift as always. Thanks to you for listening. A longer recap. You can tell we are hyped for the classics. For Nardesh, yeah. we forgot to do, but we'll cover that off maybe the two French races in our Kona recap earlier next week. Until then, ciao.